Welcome to Liverpool. Welcome to the city of love, of music, of cultural diversity. A city proud to hold your hand through the next 10 days and the best sport on the planet. This is the opening ceremony of the 15th Netball World Cup. The crowd's already inside the arena, waiting to see their star players, their teams as they head out onto court. All playing, of course, for this one goal, the World Cup trophy. Will it be Australia so many times before, 11 times before, that have lifted the World Cup? Or will it be a new blood, a new breed taking on the trophy? I'm Caroline Barker alongside Pamela Cookie, who for so long gazed at that trophy with loving eyes. I said we're in the city of love ahead of the opening <laughs> ceremony, Pamela Cookie. But, oh, have you had your hands on that trophy? Oh, wouldn't that just be the pinnacle of your netballing career? As you were saying earlier, Australia have lifted that many a time. New Zealand, Trinidad and Tobago have tasted success. But the other teams now, I think this competition is wide open. There is at least five teams that could realistically take it in that final. When I saw you earlier try and lift the trophy, I know a reason why you've never been near it before. <laughs> She didn't even have the gloves on at the time. Nowhere near it, nowhere near it. Such pride from Australia. Their fans already here believing, believing that their side will lift it again. Snuck it in their pouch already. Yeah, they're one eye, hand on it, but still a lot of competition to play, even though they have played this morning and had a formidable performance. I've just realised they were England fans holding on to that kangaroo. No stereotypes oh. inside the arena. Maybe that's as close as well. they feel they'll get to the Aussies. <laughs> So we're here then for the opening ceremony of the Netball World Cup. Expect music, expect dance, expect plenty of woos. Hope you've got your camera phone ready, Pam. In the air with the lights to bring you the first day of the Netball World Cup. Creativity. Hope. The twinkles of the stars. Compassion. The lights Intuition. of the sky. Success. Echoing in Lucy in the sky. Strength. Diamonds. You'll hear a in lot from the Beatles throughout this tournament. Words have power. Las and onto the stage, entering into the your middle. Passion should burn brighter than your fears. Such brilliant power costumes across the bottom of the dress, the Lucy skyline the of the Liverpool. And that is how it looks. I've been fortunate the enough to see over the past couple of nights this area lit up in one day. Are flowing out like endless rain into a paper cup. They slither wildly as they slip away across the universe. Pools of sorrow, waves of joy are drifting through my open mind, possessing and caressing me. classic across the universe. Hello and thanks to Lady Liverpool for that very warm welcome from the M&S Bank Arena right here on the iconic waterfront in Liverpool. Birthplace of pop music, home to the most passionate sports fans on earth and a melting pot of people, culture, and ideas. There is no better place for us to welcome the world for the opening ceremony of the 2019 Vitality Netball World Cup. 
BBC Radio Merseyside's Lisa Murray welcoming the world to the Netball World Cup. Please and give now a huge we round welcome of the, for the team. 16 teams and coaches. Bouncing onto who court the first off, the, the Australian Diamonds, number one in the world, the defending champions. Yeah, really coming out here with a point to prove after their Commonwealth silver. England picking them in that final match, but Caitlin Bassett there holding the flag, their captain, their leader, their target shooter in the back. Katie Bass and all behind her. Up next, Barbados, the Bajan Gems. Gems. They will bring the party. They will indeed. They come with flair, 590 caps between them. They've got experience. Um, they had a good result against Barbados in Singapore, sorry, 69-34 they won this morning. Play New Zealand on Saturday. That's going to give them that boost heading into Saturday. Malawi on Sunday for Sandra Bruce Small's team. Recognise this lot? Here come England, led by Serena Guthrie. One of those players who brings it on and off court. World best second back in 1975, but they believe. They do indeed. They have so much confidence going to it. They have the biggest ball coming out now. We see Jeeva Mentor, Rachel Dunn, those experienced players. Leila Guthrie, this is her first World Cup coming up the back there. Just really excited and really knowing they can put on a good show. All the gear as well. They're up on court one Friday, 7 o'clock against Uganda. We will see them shortly. Serena Guthrie, known for her DJ skills. I don't know if she's been on the Liverpool anthems as they all walk in. Here come Fiji, the Fiji Pearls. Fiji Pearls, the youngest team in this competition in terms of Bradbridge. They're coached this by a Hall of Famer, Australian Jamaica. Diamond, and they're just here to come and do some work and, and develop for the future. The Sunshine Girls of Jamaica. If ever there was a team that have got belief about winning this World Cup, it's Jamaica. They have so much confidence and belief. On court, they've got some individual players who are just shining and bringing it all together now under one team. It's not just the flair, it's that court prowess that they now have. They have From attitude Malawi, in the buckets. Queens. They've drenched the Mersey for their attitude, as have the Malawi Queens. Queens on court, Queens off court. They were rocked by not having Wyke and Wender, who was player of the tournament back in 2015, but they still got skills. They have indeed, and Joyce Mbrula is coming in in that goal shooter position. She had a great um, Super League season with Manchester Thunder lifting the trophy with them. And they're just developing now, starting to find their feet again and bring that queenness that we've seen before. Oh, how to be at the Easy front of the parade. And if there's someone you want to be in front of, it's the twinkling diamond feet. I said diamonds to New Zealand. Don't oh, mention don't that. Say that. Laura Langman, though, she does have diamonds on the soles of her oh, feet. She's got every gem you can think about. She is a formidable centre player. She plays wing defence as well, but she's a leader on and off the court. And she really propels that team. They've got many names. Uh, oh, more Ireland. experienced team than the Commonwealth Games. Come on, Northern Ireland. Come on, the Warriors, their nickname for this tournament. Northern Ireland led by... And how good is it to see oh. Caroline O'Hanlon after a nasty fall earlier, back up on her feet. She's gone through the concussion protocol. She's all right, and they need her heart. They do, they do indeed. And she is a fighter, and she would not have missed this for the so world, I would have known. So great to see her carrying this flag tonight. Then there comes Samoa. Samoa, one of those teams who've got big expectations for this tournament. Seen them out and around, having a cup of coffee earlier in front of me in the queue. I thought, at last, someone taller than me. <laughs> No, Samora, they've been in many a World Cup, only losing one game in their qualifying round, so they'll want to put again one up to get themselves up that World Championship ladder. All the teams parading around court, being welcomed into the arena here in Liverpool. That was a live Liverpool connection, the live building just down the road, one of the famous landmarks here in Liverpool. Talking of famous, Scotland rocked on from the Commonwealth Games. They have brought support through here in Liverpool and up front Caroline Maxwell, knee brownie, she's another of those real heartbeats. Oh Claire Brownie indeed is that heartbeat of that squad and again another player that does so much work on and off the court. Singapore, well best eighth in 1967. They've been in and around it but they've got a couple of stars in their team. Yeah Charmaine Sora was a star of Singapore in the Asian Games. Her shooting accuracy is phenomenal and she creates so much space in that circle. So there's Singapore. What you'll see through all these teams is real flair as well. And tight, tight games will get through the tournament. 
If you want a team to put some hope on, it's Bongium Somi in South Africa. Yes, they are indeed. They have come on leaps and bounds. Under coach Norma Plummer, they Love now... Norma. Oh, she's phenomenal, isn't she? She, they have so much belief. She's given them that belief. She's given them that skill. She's allowed them to go off and play around the world and get that international competition, and it's brought results. Sri Lanka, we've already seen them today, and you'll recognise the tallest player in this tournament, standing at two metres and six centimetres, which is... Six is that ten. Is that double you? <laughs> Probably, yes. Is that you on my shoulders? <laughs> she is tall, and she is a real target for men in, in that back end. Need to improve how they get the ball into That's the circle the with her as well, though, because when she is under that post, we see her do so well, but it's about just getting that ball in to Tajini Spingola. Uh, Love the Calypso girls. Someone practiced their walking. They did indeed. Marching it out, led by Sammy Wallace. Another, I, I'm loving the shooters in this competition, but a great shooter. For if you many had Calypso years. in your soul, that is how you'd stride on court. You you've got to work it, That's how you? you walk to the toilet, Pamela. <laughs> Don't deny it. Now, we heard the cheers back home in Zimbabwe we did. when they got their debut game. They're coming up in just a moment. They were cheering out there, but Uganda, the she cranes, they're another popular team out here at the World Cup. We've seen them previously in the last tournament just being so noisy with their fans. Uganda then, the starter perhaps to the noise that's going to come out for the Zimbabwe Gems. I said you could hear them. Here they come. Yeah, indeed, their game this afternoon phenomenal noise the crowd the support that they've brought and they're really putting a good show as well getting that win this morning how's your heart doing oh. they've raced out there on court some of these players got to play this afternoon some of them played this morning it's like they barely breathe it's the excitement isn't it so here are all your teams then for the netball world cup but there's one important team yes team white team white the officials that will guide them all through it already today loads of clear talking unlike gary burgess to skip out onto court there, the final umpire. Yeah. Look at that, England right behind Australia sat there. How much do they want to jump in front of them? Oh. Mary Troll hot big smiles from her in there. Rachel Dunn, one of England's most top players. <laughs> she loves this. She's been to a few opening ceremonies now, and that wealth of experience that she can bring to the rest of the squad. You've sat on a few opening ceremonies. How's this comparing so far? Oh, this is exciting, isn't it? The lights, the Please drama. Welcome the our speakers. Our first speaker is Vitality Netball World Cup 2019 Chair Nikki Dunn OBE. Good afternoon, Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. As Chair of Vitality Netball World Cup 2019, I am delighted to welcome you to the event and to the great city of Liverpool. <laughs> when we were discussing our vision for this World Cup, we decided that we would aim to create the best Women's World Cup. Our vision is built on four pillars. These are elite sport. Over the next 10 days, you will witness incredible athleticism and intense competition as 16 teams battle it out to be crowned world champions. The second pillar is empowering women and girls. <laughs> Across the world, Netball makes a difference to millions of women and girls. From a 56-year-old British lady who felt like she'd lived her life in a box until network, Netball lifted the lid, to a young girl in the village in Botswana who gained an education through her ability to play netball. She's now training to be a pilot. <laughs> this friendly... <laughs> Thank you. This friendly and vibrant city of Liverpool, with its rich culture, love of sport, and many other attractions, is our third pillar. The fourth is welcoming the world. Over the next 10 days, we'll welcome the world, both here in the arena, where over 100,000 tickets have been sold, and through the global broadcast audience watching at home. 
This World Cup will leave a legacy for the sport of netball, both in England and across the globe. With participation figures rising, domestic leagues getting stronger and the media spotlight increasing on women's sport. This event could not have happened without the support of our partners. UK Sport, Liverpool City Council, ACC Liverpool and England Netball. And of course our sponsors. Thank you to you all. We have... We have teams from 16 countries here today. To you, may I wish you all the very best of luck, and to the millions of people who will be watching, both here in the arena and on television across the world, you're in for a treat. May the best team win, and thank you. Chair and please welcome Cup, our next Nikki speaker, Dunn Minister of Sport, Mims Davies. Good afternoon, everyone, and it is a real pleasure to be here today on Merseyside for the start of the Vitality World Cup. Liverpool is, of course, a city rich in sporting heritage, home to world-famous venues from horse racing to golf to many others. And the pictures seen the world over when the Champions League trophy was paraded through the city last month was a sight to behold. And it truly illustrated how much of an inspirational influence sports can have on a local community. And I'm sure even a few Everton fans in the audience might just agree a little bit or disagree. Now, Liverpool is developing an impressive portfolio of delivering major sporting events. In the 2018 Boccia World Championships, which were held here, and we will be seeing in 2021 the stage set for the Special Olympics, as well as the Rugby League World Cup, and then in 2022, the City City will come alive again for the World Gymnastic Championships. It's very easy to see why ESPN named Liverpool the greatest sporting city in the UK back in 2017. Thank you, Liverpool. Now, hosting sporting events in any city is a huge boost, not only vitally to the local economy, but also to the sheer pride it engenders to the whole of the community. So for many, it's a huge coup to have so many sporting events taking place on their doorsteps. It raises Liverpool's reputation as truly one of the world's leading cities when it comes to staging events. And it's already been an amazing amazing summer for women's sport. The Lionesses captivating the nation with their run, absolutely, into the semi-finals of the FIFA World Cup. And don't miss it, the women's ashes well underway. And now netball comes here, the World Cup here, the chance to have uh, the mo momentum truly keeping going. And I, as the Minister, want to see women's sport continue to rise, to inspire the next generation. An impact of events just like this cannot be underestimated in getting people active and staying active. And the sport of netball continues to grow massively in popularity in no small part because of the phenomenal success in last year's Commonwealth Games as England secured the gold medal. So I would like to thank Vitality for its continuing support of netball, for sponsoring this World Cup, for uh, being held here for the first time in England since 1995. Your support helps us capitalise on this and grow the game even further. So I too would very much like to wish the very best of luck to all the nations participating. This is truly going to be a very exciting couple of weeks of top-class netball. I'm very proud to be here supporting
supporting you and welcome you all here today. It's going to be an intensive and exciting tournament and a huge chance for netball to truly shine here in Liverpool, to inspire the next generation, to make sure we've got the new players, the new umpires, the big stars, and of course, like you in the room, the dedicated supporters. Thank you. And finally, let us hear from President-elect of the International Netball Federation, Liz Nichols, CBE. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a fantastic day of celebration of netball and, and sport in general. So I, it's my honour to speak on behalf of the International Netball Federation to welcome you to the Vitality Netball World Cup 2019. It's our premier international netball competition here in Liverpool, here in your hometown at the MS Bank Arena. One of the International Federation's three core strategies is to deliver thrilling world-class events. We aim to make sure that each of our events exhilarates and excites fans, spectators and broadcasters all over the world. And this is England's third time of hosting the Netball World Cup, and I've no doubt that it will be thrilling and a phenomenal success. I know we're in for a real treat. We'd not be here without the support of many, but I must mention the National Lottery, and many of you might be National Lottery players. Thank you very sincerely for the support. And thank you also to the sponsors and partners, Vitality, the AACC Liverpool, Liverpool City Council, Jaffa, Gilbert, our official ball sponsor, Betfred, and also Sky and the BBC and other broadcasters who will help us share the Vitality Netball World Cup Liverpool 2019 with the world. Now, we all know that netball is top team sport, and it takes a top team to host an event like the Netball World Cup. So thank you to England Netball and our superb organising committee, to our international umpires, to our technical officials, to our ball girls, and to every one of our amazing volunteers, the Pivoteers. We really do appreciate your hard work and dedication to our great sport. I wish, on behalf of the International Netball Federation, all of the teams the very best of luck. May they play with skill, with passion, with competitive spirit, and with sportsmanship, and thrill our fans all over the world. Let's play on. Great speeches about the empowerment of women, and we're about to see that in action. A real treat. We're going on a whirlwind of a netball match. Watch out for 15 young netball player performers. They're warming up on court at the moment. Dancers and actresses taking us on that journey. They're not doing my star jump warm up yet, Pamela. No. I've seen that. I don't think they need to do that. <laughs> I'm sweating just watching. <laughs> what we'll see in this is music from Liverpool taking us on this part of the journey. Watch out for the skies. Watch out for the pyrotechnics. It's going to have a bit of everything, this. I'm so excited. I've heard lots of great things of what's to come. I spent three days working with a netball coach travelled over to Spain where many of these performers come from just to teach them the finer arts of the game combining the dance with the moves on court and actually those two things combine perfectly indeed they do and we often say that when we're watching the games that how graceful the players are how strong they are and that is a great combination with dance so have a listen out for some of the the real big Liverpool tunes that will be in the background performance combining the work of a company here in the UK, Luminos. They've got a new music score from Andy Frizzell, some great costumes as well. 
This was all put together here in the UK. It's going to be shots of the Liver Bird, Liverpool's iconic building here too, but also the Liver Bird, a real symbol for here in Liverpool. Love the projections. Yeah. On the, might have put you off when you were playing. <laughs> yeah. So this is a combination of earth, water, air, and fire, and those ripples breaking out across the court. And very much how netball has grown globally. Yeah, it's so big. We see the likes of four African nations in this tournament this time, increasing before. They're in Oceania, in Europe, in the Caribbean. The netball is just ever expanding, and that ripple effect of the more and more people that get to know about it, get to see it, get to watch it, get to feel it. Now they're sucked into that whirlwind in the middle. And they're the true epic scene here inside the arena, both courts that we've seen in full action already this morning. Did you realise it's going on behind you too? Sorry, I just looked around <laughs> and saw them behind me. And it's great, this, this arena is full. <laughs> so every court. So the projections of the water, of the bubbles, of the waves of the whirlpools. Beautiful views. And now the dancers caught in the bubbles, turning into balls and making the splash on the court. And there's our first shot the liver bird making its way across and such a, a dominant feature on the skyline of Liverpool caught in now. Yeah, indeed. And it's a great way to kind of lift what the essence of Liverpool onto these two courts. And now here comes Autumn, the autumnal leaves underneath the performers. And they'll all gather together before flying into the air and then right. Much like the World Cup, a true international flair from these performers from Iceland, Slovakia, Sweden, Morocco, Germany, Poland, Spain, Denmark, and Ireland. And here in England too. They've already covered more distance than you do on a court map. Easy now. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to lie. I did like my end of the third in goal attack. <laughs> They enjoy that inside the arena. Just as they spin round, the two meteors uniting and linking both courts. Now all about the energy, the determination that's needed to play elite sports. in that ball well and the grace that we saw earlier and now this upbeat this pace that we see the feistiness of netballers showing on this with these dancers you have to strain every muscle right to the very moment to the very last minute as england proved against australia definitely you can't rest on your laws you can't just play five minutes in each quarter it has to be the whole 15 of all four quarters now the live bird rises again what a beautiful sight building into the crescendo, the planet, the centre, the Netball World Cup, the centre, the dancers, the performers, the players, the world.
And it always ends with a big bang and you getting your eyebrows singed. <laughs> As every regular netball game for you, Pamela Cookie. Exactly, yes. The fireworks that is netball. And now the players, exhausted, look to the sky. Above them, two golden netball aerialists. Suspended here in the centre above each court. They're on large netball hoops and nets. towards the end of the ceremony with Lucy in the sky with diamonds. And I saw the Aussie players swaying along to that one. Yeah, loving it, Aussie diamonds, they were singing that tune. And more Beatles classics. Jo Harton, ahead of her hundredth cap, she hopes, <laughs> this afternoon. Yes, I'm sure we'll see her. Is it best that she's miming right now or yes. that we can't hear her? Um, definitely best that she's miming right now. But no, she does love a little sing song. Celine Dion's her favourite. What a brilliant opening ceremony. Great collaboration between the Institute of Arts Barcelona and Culture Liverpool. The dancers, the performers head off court and they'll be followed by our own performers, our own players, our own teams that will follow them off court in a moment. Signing choir, as part of it, Julia Baird, John Lennon's sister, one of those as part of the signing choir. Enjoying this evening. 
It's, this is where it all starts. Yes, some have already played, but others, their first game still to come this evening. I know we're biased, Pam. Yeah. I know you sat through many an opening ceremony, but that one tops a lot, right? Oh, definitely. No, that was, that was really, really cool. So now a reprise of There She Goes, the cast, the choir gone. Now time for the moment to bid farewell to the teams too, as they're led off court one. Some will be returning this evening for the later sessions here. Some, of course, have already played. We've already seen a, a win for New Zealand, for Barbados, for Australia, and that historic win for Zimbabwe. Their debut World Cup and getting a win too. South Africa just seen leaving there. They're due to play this afternoon. Well, it's had pyrotechnics. It's had light shows. Had spectacular aerial performances. I mean, that one that was my to go. Yeah, that was my best bit of it. The move she was pulling, I've definitely seen netballers out there do that. I like to say I did it as well. It tops a hoist. Definitely. And a, and a dunk. <laughs> but what we've seen in this ceremony so far, the young voices of local women, the performers from across the world too, and it's about empowerment. It's about young boys and young girls watching around the world and feeling like they can do that. They can get out on the court, they can be part of it. Exactly, and that is what the players out there, the officials, the umpires, the whole organising committee want to do. They want to show this great sport to the world and that it is possible to do anything. Please join me in thanking the fantastic teams and coaches of the 2019 Vitality Netball World Cup. Good luck to you all. And thanks also to the fabulous artists and performers this afternoon. On behalf of Culture Liverpool and Liverpool City Council, producers of this opening ceremony, thank you for your support. Enjoy the excitement of the tournament and may the best team win. And as the lights go down in Liverpool, we'll see them rise again between now and next Sunday. The teams will fight it out and they will battle it out for the ultimate prize in world netball. Who comes out on top? We said it matters about empowerment. It matters about being visible. It matters about seeing these girls go out on court. You'll see that over the next 10 days. The best in the world here in Liverpool. Prepare for the ride of your life. Thank you for watching. Do you find a city with its reflection in the sea? Its beauty and mystery, brooding power and deft subtlety. Only here does the blood pump with music, sport and a shot of sea salt. A playground for dreamers, pioneers, iron men and artists. Only here do the sounds from the streets create the soundtrack of our lives. Is the city a stage where giants walk on roads and queens play in the river? Where passion comes a standard and everyone's a fan. Where the fires of justice burn brighter as time passes. They don't fade away and aren't forgotten.